do to make sure you hit that deadline. And you start to work backwards. I mean, I want to really help you through every step of the way. I want to make sure you have the supplies that you need, you have the information that you need, the support systems around. Honestly, looking at it from like a business standpoint, like the the higher ups of that company or whoever you're working for really shouldn't like tolerate that because like if you're having to baby that person through projects like consistently, then it's not really worth it to keep away in the company. Correct. Which is why some people advance and why some people is there's a call the Peter principle. We actually Peter out. This is as good as they get. And some people do that at the age of 19. This is as good as their life's ever going to get performance wise. And there's others that just excel. They go on to be CEOs. They go on to do some amazing things. And you're right. And the key word is, is it feels like it's babying the process, right? When the reality is this person has never been taught. That's the reality. And what we're going to do is we're going to set a very strong precedence that this is what the expectation is. Not just this time, but each and every time. And if you want to avoid sitting down with me for 20 minutes and have to go through this each and every time, I promise you, when you sit down with someone and you say, this is what you have to do, these are strong managerial skill sets, by the way. Every time you don't hit a deadline, guess what you and I are going to be doing? And so either one or two things are going to happen in the end result. If I have to keep coming in, I'm going to eventually feel like this is babying, which means we're going to have to write this up, which means there's going to be consequences with it. Or two, you're going to adapt and understand that my deadlines are not suggestions. One of the two. But when people go through this process, one, they usually feel incredibly supportive the first time. I mean, it feels great. And so you're going to check, you're going to set your calendar for this one deadline, this very first thing that they said, and you're going to check in. I want to see how you did on this very first. I want to make sure you're on target because remember, our deadline is not a suggestion. It's an actual date that it has to be completed. And my work requires you to do yours. Eventually, I tell you, real quickly, when you have that kind of monitoring, it only takes once. Most people fall in line. Because now we're not enabling it. We're not adjusting everything. We're not sugarcoating it. We're not bypassing it. We're just being very, very direct. Now, if this person hits the deadline and they successfully complete it, what are you going to do? Thank you. <laughs> we're going to say thank you. Great. Exactly. I appreciate it. Great job. I'll make sure to catch you on the L. <laughs> and you walk right back out letting them know. I'll see you again on the L. And I'm going to see you again on the A in the end. And guess what? By the time we hit S, what am I going to have in my hands? Right. It's something that we have to model. And we're having to work with corporations to help that. Because the reality is, we're going to talk about economics in the last little few uh, minutes that we have. Businesses are having to rethink everything now. Rethink everything. We have a shortage <coughs> moving into the qualified workforce. Did you all know that? <coughs> so you getting your degree, you're going to hit a jackpot coming up if you can get into the right field. So, how many, uh, I'm going to tell you all of a person that is very dear to my heart. He is a guru in economic development. His name is Mark Lottman. You ever want to read an interesting book, When the, ba uh, when the Boomers Fail, Baby Boomers Fail? It is a phenomenal book. Absolutely incredible. And what he decided about 10 years ago, he went through a state of depression because he realized real quick after he analyzed the things that he um, was actually behind the eight ball, the U.S. was behind the eight ball, and so was the entire world. And what he started to talk about, he was known as the Kevorkian of economic development for a long time because economic developers didn't believe what he was saying, and every bit of it came true. And he actually makes an enormous amount of money going in to talking to people about how they can do it. He said, in order to have a stable economy, we have to have just enough old people that are retired out, that are sitting there. We have to have just enough young people being born and moving through. We have to have just enough of the unqualified, and we have to have in the workforce, and we have to have just <coughs> enough unqualified workforce. Now, what's happened with the baby boomers is not just something that happened here. It's just, just unbelievable. If you don't know what that means as far as being a baby boomer, there was this unbelievable birth rate explosion that happened. What's going on now is that those baby boomers didn't have six, seven, eight children. They're having one or two children. And now they're hitting retirement. And so they're going into this too old section. We don't have enough young people being born and moving in to be able to support what's hitting the retirement in the workforce. On top of that, due to all of the technology, due to everything that's going on because it's this rapid growth by the time something new is invented technology-wise and it filters down into elementary, to be able to make those changes, it's already outdated again. And so we have more and more that are going into this unqualified workforce. 
Now, we don't have enough people being born to even take care of the jobs that are being left here. This is not a US problem, this is a global problem. If you can get, and this is why I do what I do, is my job right now is to move as many as I can from the unqualified to the qualified workforce. And I have to analyze where are those jobs at, because if you get your degree right now, and you make it to the qualified workforce, you're gonna make it financially. You're gonna, all of your abstract dreams are gonna become a reality, guaranteed. We don't have enough. And so CEOs, because they're so desperate, we have people that can't even retire right now because they don't have enough qualified workforce and they can't bring them into our community to bring them in to our business or they don't have enough funds to increase the pay to get a better quality person. They're having to rethink how they handle the clientele that they have, the employees that they have right now. So we're gonna have to, in their mind, babysit a little bit and teach some skill sets that have been lost during all of this. We're gonna to have to rethink because there isn't this unbelievable pool that we can pull from from the qualified workforce. We're gonna to have to start looking at the unqualified and people in generational poverty as an asset. And we're gonna to have to invest there a great deal. So this can be an incredible, incredible time. A lot of people think this is doom and gloom. I actually think you guys are sitting in the sweetest spot. You're right here in college, working your way to right there. We just want to make sure you make it to the finish line and that you can help others. So then that means a lot of companies are losing money because they have to invest more. In right. A lot of people are coming out of retirement because they can't find the skill sets and the workforce that they need. There's a lot of people that can't retire that are just, they would love to retire but can't. Um, I have a, a sister who went into manufacturing. This is the 16 year old who was pregnant that I had to, to raise during my, my college years. <coughs> um, who is, who hit it. Great. Manufacturing is one of many. CNC, accounting, nursing, health, those kind of things are really going strong right now. And so she actually went in to be a, quali a qualified engineer. Her income over the last four years, she can pretty much go anywhere in the Fortune 500 companies. And is heading up one that's globally, T.D. Williamson right now. And is about to move on a global level. She did that in five years after getting her degree. And it's because she understands. She has a skill set now. She can easily sell it, and they desperately need to be able to retire out some people, so they're desperately looking for people who will, are go-getters, who have time management skills, who have the discipline, who has these techniques that they don't have to babysit, by the way, which is why it's so important for you guys to develop these skill sets to be able to be emotionally strong, because you'll advance up quickly if you do. Also, one of the things, the greatest things that she did for herself was to learn leadership skills. She knows how to take all the engineers below her of walking through this theory of change, walking through emotionally being strong in their floor plans in their office and things like that and being able to hit deadlines. So her productivity and what got her so famous in her corporation was because her productivity was higher than everybody else. Her department was higher than everybody else. So she decided to invest a little bit of energy and helping develop these skills, making sure that everyone understands that deadlines are not a suggestion, they're actually deliverables that have to be met. And because of that, she shot her whole department did. They're all growing. And that's what companies are looking at. So these very things that you're gonna be learning this semester, I want you to get the connection that it's not only for your overall quality of life. We do better when we know what energizes us emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, all of these resources, the 11 resources you're going to be learning in these couple of modules on down, this is why we take time to show you mental models that you can learn to apply in your life. You want to be the qualified workforce. Not that we don't need unqualified, by the way. We do. But you all have an opportunity to go to that qualified workforce. So let's get it right. Let's be incredibly strong getting there. So this class really is about changing your life and giving you the leadership skills that you need to help others. So your department is the lead, so you can advance up in your career, not somebody else. Because if we go into it that we're gonna not allow and not baby this mentality, your department will not thrive. Because there's not enough qualified workforce to pull from that you're gonna to need to outshine everybody else. So let's take a little time and invest in one another and get to that level, okay? Any questions about that? Mark Lawton is his name. Fascinating guy. He will be coming in February, and you all will have an opportunity to meet him in February. Any questions?
it, what I want them to do before we dismiss, I want you guys to put into your portfolio, I want a, a theory of change model. And if you can remember that one, we'll actually, we have somebody here that was really good at sharing that next week. Uh, Nikki was in Circles Out of Poverty last I week. I absolutely she remember was, that. I remember they, the presentation. Awesome presentation. <laughs> we, we came down to her uh, uh, meeting on Thursday night and actually presented it to the group down there, Mark Lockman's Theory of Change. Nikki so. made um, our newsletter and it went um, nationally and Mark loved it. So <laughs> it was just, it was great to see. So that, yes, it was really good. If you don't have to do this one this week, but make sure you do the theory of change. Put that in there, and then we can we can revisit this next Thursday whenever we do it. Did you want to do it? Can somebody to draw it for her? I'll, I'll draw. I'll draw right back out for you guys. And um, what I would like for us to do, if you, you all do appreciations. Uh huh. Um, let's do what's called popcorn appreciations. Do you all do that? What What are they? Popcorn appreciations. Oh, sure. I don't know that we've done it that often in here because uh, so. Professor View always forgets that at the end. It's one of okay. his, it's he needs to build that into his dis yeah. discipline. Yeah, it's all right. Um, just around the room, one word that helps describe 